from spectator.org. Does Jazz Jennings regret transitioning? They tried to make Jazz the example how, of how amazing gender transition is. All they did was show how bad it is. I want to say a few things as we start. I genuinely and sincerely hope Jazz finds happiness and health and safety. And um, I feel really bad for, for Jazz Jennings. She was lied to. I think that Jazz is, is the victim of very serious parental abuse, or child abuse. The parents are abusing Jazz. And, and I'm going to play a video for you guys, which may make you, which may, you may find disturbing. However, it aired on TLC. And because it airs on cable television nationwide, I would make the argument that YouTube has no standing to take any issue with the video I'm going to, to play for you. Nothing in it is graphic except for the statements made by Jazz Jennings' mother, who threatens to, I'm just going to say it, forcefully insert a lubricated dilator into the pelvic wound of her child. On cable television says, and if you don't, I will wring your neck. Tell me this is not child abuse and how this is on television. And then we'll talk about the issue of Jazz. And I believe Jazz Jennings desperately needs state intervention. I'm not a big statist. I'm a little statist. I think there should be some, I'm not, I'm not an anarchist. I think the state is okay to a little, little bit. All right. And this is one of the instances where I think the state needs to intervene. I, Jazz is an adult at this point. Yeah, she's 23. Ja but Just the, about 22. The state needs to take Jazz away from these people. I'm going to play, for, play, you, uh, play you this clip. And, and, and uh, uh, there's two of them, actually. This is disturbing. You've been warned. But with her, I'm worried about, like, her mental well-being and her dilation. The minute she leaves my house, we have a dilation problem. That, that is a concern. When you don't have that watchful eye, they tend to go back to old patterns. I have woken Jazz out of a dead sleep and taken the dilator and put the lubrication on it and said, here, you take this and you put it in your vagina. If not, I will. But Jazz is bad, even when I'm home once a day. I will be so mad if she goes away to college and that thing seals up. I will wring her neck. Can you imagine? I will wring her neck if she does it. So the story here is that Jazz Jennings is not using a dilator. For those that aren't familiar, a dilator is a tool that trans women use to spread the wound that is created to simulate a vagina. It's called the neo-vagina. And they to, have to do it forever. Forever. To prevent the closure of the wound. When you get a slash wound, the wound attempts to close itself. So when they did surgery on Jazz to create a, uh, it's a facsimile, uh, it's, it's, I don't know how you would scientifically describe it. Uh, a wound with surgically grafted stomach lining to simulate uh, a sexual organ. They call it a neo-vagina. But it's, it's not a vagina, so I don't think that, that makes sense to say. Jazz is not doing this. So, for whatever reason, Jazz does not want to do this. So the mother says she wakes Jazz up in the middle of the night, takes the dilator, lubricates it, and says, stick it in or I will. That is horrifying. And then she says if she goes off to college and doesn't do this and it closes up, I will wring her neck. Could you imagine? How is that not a threat of very serious abuse to say that you will take that you wake up in the middle of the night with an object you demand be inserted into your child's cavity and that you will choke them if they don't do it. It's I, monstrous. It, it, but Jazz is 22, so is it just, they're just an abusive relationship that's totally legal and everything's... It's not, it's not, it, it, look, there's, there's spousal abuse, there's parental abuse. If a man was waking a, a, his wife up in the middle of the night with an object and lubricating it and say, you better stick this in or I will do it myself. That would be spousal rape. Yep. And you would go to prison for it, that. Is it a concern that if it does seal up, that it will get infected and the jazz can die from sepsis it's, or something? It's, it's that you may have to have regardless. a surgery again, but it'll get infected and have problems regardless, like Lennon said. But no, the real concern is that it'll close up and then you have to have the surgery again. And the real question that should have been asked is, hey, jazz, do you regret this surgery? Yeah. There's why are a reason you, why she's are you not letting using it close the dilator? Up? It's painful. There, it, There's recurring infections, and she clearly doesn't want the successful surgery that is not successful. Four. Four surgeries. She was lied right. to. So here you have a, a human being, Jazz, clearly not wanting to do this, and a mother forcing her to do it with a threat of violence. Let me let me play this clip for you from, from, from the show as well. So um, are you feeling like you wanted to start talking about... Are you okay? I'm okay. 
I'm like, I'm gonna cry. But you, you know I can't get out of my head. I know, no, listen. <laughs> I it know. just doesn't stop. It's okay. Give me a hug. It's okay. I know what you're going through. We've been there before. No, it still doesn't stop now. I and know. I'm already going well, back to you, negative. But the more you're talking about yourself, it gets harder. Mm -hmm. You're digging in and you're, it's making you put a, a magnifying glass on what's already difficult as it is. So this is hard for you. I know. And you don't, we don't want to push you I know. Anymore. I'm the one doing it. Like, I know. You're your own worst enemy. Oh my God, that mom's a psycho. You're your own worst enemy. You're the one doing the place, it. I place and like my mind is very cluttered and not clear. And I really want to have that clarity. I really want to understand myself and be able to read my own soul and what I want. And it's just very challenging. And I think I'm kind of breaking down a little bit and spiraling into negativity. I just want to feel like myself. Like, that's right. it. You're, I don't like care. All I want is to be happy and feel like me. And I don't feel like what me ever. Me? I don't feel like me ever. Do you know that Jez Jennings, Jennings has also started dating women? Yeah. And that's that that should not be shocking. To I, people. I believe Jazz Jennings is suffering from gender dysphoria a thousand percent. Yes. And I think probably deep down experiencing regret over the surgeries that they've had and the hormones they've had. I don't know if regret is the right word because regret to me would would signify jazz making a decision. Then later on saying I should not have done that. Hence regret. I think manipulated into thinking that she made a decision. Because the truth is, this looks more like Munchausen by proxy to me, where a mom has absolutely lost it and started putting their own problems and need for attention on their child, played it out through the child, helped push and inch them in different directions towards something they wanted that they knew would produce attention, and now are continuing the cycle of abuse to continue the attention. And the child at this point buys it, and is, is also at the same time experiencing the real emotional problems. I know it's my fault. That's crazy. The mom's saying you are your own worst enemy. Yeah, that's, tor that's abuse. That's, to Gas put that into a child's mind and tell them, you know, your problem, when you think about things, you take a magnifying glass and obsess over it. It makes the kid crazy. It makes them do that thing. And Jazz why, needs to get away from this woman. Yes. L Landon said something to me before where she has seen this clip and she said, imagine if this was a boyfriend talking to, we have two daughters out of our three kids. Imagine if it was a boyfriend talking to one of our daughters, treating her like this saying you're your own worst enemy and she's blaming herself there it's all my fault i know it's all my fault you know this is not okay in any context you know like the 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 behaviors we see here are very clearly manipulative well look, look, look there are certain circumstances where i would tell someone it's their fault if if someone is getting upset i would and, and there was nothing to be upset about and i'm like okay maybe there's a, I, I typically don't defer to chemical imbalance but I usually tell people, hey, look, start exercising, start eating healthy. You'll probably see your mood improve. With Jazz, the reason I think it's so egregious that the mother is saying you are your own worst enemy is that it's the mother that did this to Jazz. Mm -hmm. yeah. And Jazz is saying, I don't feel like me. I don't feel like me. It's because right. the mom I'll, is I'll, trying to brainwash you and make you think did, like her, right. dude. Get out of there, but, Jazz. But yeah. I want to I say this. I will take credit for this. For all of the things the left wants to make fun of me for, for getting wrong or whatever, because I get things wrong, fine. I predicted all of this years ago. What happened was when Jazz was a child, Jazz said that they were attracted to boys. Then around uh, 13 or 14 on the TV show and whatever that came out, Jazz was now pansexual. And I said, what does that mean? That means Jazz has found an attraction to females. That's the only explanation. Right at the age where boys start to have an right. attraction to females. And then I said, when I covered this, I'm willing to bet that in a few years, Jazz will be a, will be considered a trans lesbian. Jazz will want to date women because Jazz is a male who is finding attraction to females. Lo, we are now seeing on the show, Jazz has begun dating women. Saying like there was something weird about dating the guys and want to try something else. Maybe that's the right thing. Imagine just having your parents do this to you, taking away your ability to have a family, telling you it's your fault and the things you're feeling are your fault. That's terrifying. All the time. Uh, the, but, but, but I want to stress this. The psychological stuff, you want to have an argument about it, fine. You want to say, no, no, you don't understand. She's trying to support her trans kid. Okay. Waking your child up in the middle of the night with a lubricated dilator and saying, stick it in or else is the most psychotic thing ever. And that woman should be arrested for monstrous, it. Monstrous. Monstrous. And that exposes the lunacy behind this entire charade. This is abuse. It has always been abuse. It's why we've done what we've done to ban it in our state. I'm very proud of the state of Tennessee and our legislature and our governor for getting that in, into law. 
setting a standard in these other states who this week have started to do the same thing. I know Georgia did. There's other states we've been working with legislators to introduce these laws and get them passed. And I think we're going to make this the norm in every red state. We're going to make sure every red state gets these laws on the books and prevents these situations so that we don't see more Jazz Jennings situations in the future. And instead, we see healthy kids who got talk therapy and were then able to reverse the gender dysphoria and be in love with the person that they were born to be, the natural person that God created. And that's why Landon does her organization, Freedom Forever, because it, we need people fighting for these kids. What right. a, So we, we have this real quick um, from SoapDirt.com. I'm not super familiar, but while Spectator.org does briefly mention that Jazz Jennings went on a date with a woman, this article actually goes into detail in February about Jazz Jennings wanting to date women. And... Uh, talking about going speed dating and having trouble, and then finding a connection with women. Surprise, surprise, the biological male, of which 98% find connections with women, has found a connection with women. So my, my, my view on this was, if you have a kid and you think that kid is trans, well, you got about a 98% chance that kid is not. 99.97 you know, uh, chance the kid is not. Is that a bet you want to make on putting that kid through irreversible surgeries and hormone therapies in the event this kid is now 20 years old, crying, depressed, morbidly obese, binge eating? Jazz was supposed to go to school, college, a long time ago and yep. did not because of severe depression. Right. What I think, my view, I'm not a psychologist, psychiatrist, no idea. I think Jazz has these feelings inside, but knows because of the TV show, because of the book, because of Jazz's family, they can never come out and say it. Just like... A young gay man is scared to come out and tell his family that he's gay because of what society demands of him, because of what his, he, expect, he thinks his family expects of him. Jazz doesn't want to come out as detransitioner right. or, or straight male. You well, her entire identity right. has been built upon this, you know, and that's the whole reason that she is so depressed. She's never been given proper health care. That the message from the beginning is that you're born in the wrong body. Imagine like just the 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 trauma that that causes a child to be told. You, something's wrong with you. You were born in the wrong body. You know, that, that sets up a child on a lifetime dependency of external validation. So she's talking about her soul. Clearly, she's searching for an identity and meaning beyond the superficial identity, the, the woke, you know, gender identity, your sexuality. They're going to say, oh, just experiment with your sexuality, experiment with your gender and, and have surgeries and get on the blockers, all of these things. And that path just is a path to self-destruction, lifelong dependency on big pharma, gaping wound in her you know, neo vagina, which will ne never be a real functioning vagina. Um, this is medical exploitation. That's the proper term for what is happening to these children. There is only one reason to perform a penile inversion vaginoplasty on a minor. Jazz was 17 years old when this surgery was performed. It is to create a wound that a male can insert his penis into for sexual pleasure. That's it. That's it. Jazz, jazz cannot... Uh, feel uh, any pleasure based on the hormone blocker treatments. That is a statement made by the doctor who treated Jazz that they need to slow down on what they're doing because these young males who undergo these treatments lose sexual function and feeling. Right. Jazz, sexual abuse. So Jazz, one of the reasons Jazz probably does not want to dilate at all is because it serves no legitimate function for Jazz's life other than to let a man have sex with the wound. And feminists are standing up for this. The left-wing feminists are standing up for this. We're, we're going to make somebody do this for the pleasure of, of men for a man and let that man also pretend to be one of us and pretend that this should be a normal thing for women to do this. Because I th mean, this, it's crazy this, this grafted wound will provide no pleasure for a woman. Nothing. In fact, no. for women, isn't this whole idea of creating a vagina out of a penis kind of, I mean, I've never actually asked you, isn't it offensive? Absolutely. Everything about this is about the erasure of women. My, my womanhood is not a construct. We are a class of people. And everything from the woman face that's happening to the erasure of our actual, you know, identity and, and, and ha calling us cis people, birthing persons, breasts or chest feeders is so incredibly demeaning. Um, so it, it absolutely like it's an assault on womanhood as well. But I, I was just thinking about, you know, the puberty blockers is something that doesn't get talked about enough. The, the chemical castration. What do you think a boy would choose to do if their penis shrivels up? Because that's what happens when you get put on puberty blockers as a male. If you have no penis that does not grow from puberty, you're going to opt to 
cut it off because you're working with nothing. It, in some cases, can't even get an erection the rest of your life, let alone have an orgasm or any of these things. So they're well, but, already but, castrating them. But these kids don't know anything. They don't. No, you, they you, don't. If, look, if, if, this, if a person was an adult and said, you know, I'd like to undergo something, I'd be like, well, okay, you're an adult, fine, whatever. However, there's still considerations to be made. Like if someone came to me who's 30 years old and said, I want my hand removed, we'd probably say no to that. Right. Yeah. But these children... Here's, here's, the, here's the thing I see about Jazz Jennings. The, the reason I said I think Jazz is suffering from gender dysphoria is because Jazz is a male in a pseudo-female body and probably wants to be male, hence gender dysphoria. Jazz, as a small child, was never a man. Jazz was always just a prebubescent boy who underwent surgery and hormone therapies to become the, a facsimile of a woman and prevent male development. So there's no point at which Jazz could truly know what it is to be a man and want to be a woman. They, they're, they're doing this thing where they're taking a child and saying, look at a woman, look at a man, which one do you want to be? And it's, I guess that one. It's like, okay, we'll get the surgery ready. Well, then sure enough, Jazz reaches a, uh, the adult age and something goes terribly wrong. Yeah. Jazz we is had, really we intelligent. Had, Oh, that's that, that, that overthinking jazz. That comes from your mind being too smart. It's just your environment. Your and, mom has been way too pushy. Like just and what do you, free your mind, babe. What do you think happens when I am jazz gets canceled? Oh, I think she will absolutely start to explore the Spiral. truth. So I think what you said about I the think show is absolutely true. That the whole reason she has not expressed feelings that I'm, I feel like this is again, my opinion. I feel like the same thing that you're feeling like that she regret or Jazz regrets this and is starting to look at, I made a big mistake in my life. I actually do feel like a male and is questioning what to do. My thought is, is that when this all comes crashing down, they are going to turn around and start to call out the abusers and the people that lied to them. Because I'll give you an example. Chris Beck, do you, are you guys mm -hmm. familiar with Chris Beck? He's a Navy SEAL, served 13 tours overseas, became the first um, oh, right. special yes. operator yep. who came out as trans, did a whole special on CNN. He then came out on my podcast as detransitioning many years later. And this just happened this year. Story went crazy. And uh, Chris, you know, I, I talked to him a lot about this. And essentially, you know, the, the book deal and the book being out there and the coverage and everything made it very difficult to turn around. And it was bravery that made him turn around and tell the truth about what happened and how the military was really just out of control with this whole thing. I mean, when if you hear the whole story, it's insane. I mean, it was first appointment within 20 minutes, he was given hormones, okay? A doctor that worked with the government convinced him to write a book to make money on being transgender to help normalize transgenderism. And the media helped sell it to sell the idea that even the most masculine men can question their gender and become women, you know? And it all worked. I mean, this laid the groundwork for where we are now. And now that very person they used for propaganda is now today the person standing up saying, do not let this happen to children. I needed to speak up because this is torture, what this did. These kids don't deserve it. And doing it from a place of love, you know? He's speaking up because he doesn't want anybody to get hurt. Yeah, I'm thinking about if someone made a YouTube channel about cutting your hand off and they cut their hand off and they're like, kids, you can do it too. If you, 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 don't you probably parents, feel like you right. don't have a hand already. That's okay. Just cut it. Like that person I would consider a danger to society. And I would want them at least taken off TV, not because I hate them, because I want to protect the kid. Yeah, I don't what want if, kids what, to start. And what about school teachers doing it? Saying, remember, don't tell yes. your parents you want, you, you want to remove your hands. We prison. Can, we will go to your doctor and we will get your hand chopped off, but don't tell your parents. Speaking of prison, I mean, they don't just want to normalize this. They actually want to take children from parents who refuse to use the pronouns, affirm their you know, delusions from, from the parents. State kidnapping. That is, that's already happening. We already have bills in Minnesota right now to you know, have the state kidnapping done. If you do not affirm a child, your child can be taken from you in the United States of America. That's where we're at. What did you guys do in Tennessee? You passed, got a bill passed, but what exactly does the bill lay out? What got changed? You have to wait till 18 to get any of these surgeries, to get the hormones, to get the puberty blockers. We're not going to stop the natural development of a child in the state of Tennessee. We're not going to go and mutilate their bodies with hormones, puberty blockers, or these surgeries. These kids are innocent children of God, whether they believe in it or not. Even if you don't believe in that, you're an innocent child. 
we are not going to allow them to be mutilated in our state. And that's what we put in the code is that's not going to happen anymore in the state of Tennessee. You are going to have to wait till you're an adult to make these decisions. I may personally disagree with it at that point and think that it is unwise. And I lean more in Tim's territory, honestly, where I see it the same way as somebody asking to chop their arm off. And I think it's unethical and it should be something that's banned in medical practices. And I think, honestly, we should go, I didn't go that with far. It. Uh, well, I'm going but, further. Yeah. I think it really should end up there personally, but I understand the nuance of law and where we have to be at and the ability to, you know, have these laws stand the test of time. I, and I, I think that that's a barometer that everybody can live with, that you have to wait till you're an adult to do this. I do, however, think that perhaps it's time to start having that conversation about just not allowing transgender surgeries at all or, or treatments. Uh, the reason being, like I said, if someone comes to you and says that they want to remove a body part, we typically say, no, you can't do that. Yep. But there is only one dysmorphic disorder that results in affirmation, and it's transgenderism. I mean, there, there, there are issues of people getting what, tons of surgeries. That's why I'm not at that point where I would advocate for outright banning it for all ages. Because there are people who get lip splits and tongue splits, and I'm like, well, if you're an adult, man... So I, I suppose there really, there really is a deep challenge. Yeah. On the legal front, I understand we went as far as I think you can go, which is saying wait till an adult. On a moral front, I morally feel like people have a duty and responsibility to not participate in this because it's the abuse of, of human beings. And, and frankly, we're talking about human beings who have very serious problems. And the true empathetic thing to do is deal with the trauma, not cut an appendage off, you know, not cut their genitalia, not drug them. You know, and if we're not dealing with the actual problem and an adult can go into one of these hormone offices and say, I think this will fix my problems. And a doctor just says, yep, here you go. Here's your here's your life changing, not in a good way, adding side effects, drugs that are not even labeled for this purpose. They're not even meant for this purpose. OK, what drugs? What are the puberty blockers Lupron, are not even meant Lupron, for this. And, and Lupron's yeah. not meant for this. Even mm, off label, e even the uh, the actual testosterone and estrogen in many cases have not been tested for long periods of time for this use of transitioning somebody from a biological state of being a biological male to a woman over a long period of time to do this in a double blind way that's not looking at some sort of, you know what they love to do is convenience sampling. For people who've never heard of this, this is where you put together a group of people on purpose who you know are going to affirm the desired result you want. This happens all the time in this area of medicine. So if there's anybody who's confused and they're thinking about this, look at everything across hey. the board and look out for convenience sampling where they lie. I, I was wondering where the synthetic, synthetic testosterone comes from. Do you know where synthetic testosterone comes from? Bull testicles. No. Oh. I was actually, why did we both think that? Let's, let's, <laughs> one way to go. Like, well, how, how is it? Where, where, Rose how, petals. How it? Good guess. Oh, thanks. What do you think? Where, how, do they, how do they get it? How do they synthesize testosterone? From, from, from what? No guess? From a nut? <laughs> <laughs> it is often derived Dream. from no plant sor sources such as soy. Yeah. Oh, what a show. That's Okay, it says yams or soy. Yeah, this is from yourwellnesscenter.com. It says, uh, testosterone is synthesized in a medical laboratory, often from plant sources such as yams or soy, is engineered to match the same exact chemical structure that is already being produced naturally by your body. This enables it to perfectly mimic the original source. That's How about that? Wow. Soy? I didn't know that. I thought it was like horses or something. Yeah, yeah. that's insane. Soy is known for its estrogen content, or at least Well, you can, you can isolate anything, I guess. That's wild. I wonder where the majority wow. of puberty blockers are made. If they're made here or China, because I know a lot of our pharmaceuticals. Come have, from have, you, have, have you ever heard the story of the the radon girls? I think it was called. No. Mm -hmm. Do you want you want to look that up real quick? I think it was called the radon girls. Sure. I was going to add, by the way, what you said about TikTok. So Landon and I are actually going to a radium. rally tomorrow. Radium, yeah, radium. Girls. Band yeah. TikTok rally yeah. in DC with oh, a bunch oh. of members of Congress. And and the reason why is this is not just an app. This is a weapon no, from yeah, China. Yeah. I'm with so, that. So, this is a uh, weapon. I, the radium girls were working in watch factories and. They they were taking radium paint that could make watches glow. And it was this hot thing at the turn of the century, early 1900s. And so you'd have a watch that would glow in the dark. But the radium was very radioactive. These women would paint their teeth with it. So when you turn the lights off and smile, you'd see their glowing teeth. And then within a few years, their jaws would swell up with cancer. Their mouths would fall off. Literally, their mouths would break and fall off. Their jaw would fall off. Their teeth would fall out of their mouths. Their heads would enlarge. I think about stuff like that. And then I think about Jazz Jennings, because like I was looking at that, that video thumbnail, and I'm like, radium girls, what is it, uh, thalidomide, Jeez, yeah. asbestos, yeah. 
lobotomies. Right. Wow. I think in a hundred years they're gonna look back and be like, how barbaric. These people Absolutely. were barbarians. They used Absolutely. to drink they used to drink mercury to try and cure <laughs> syphilis. <laughs> The idea was the mercury would kill enough of your body that the syphilis would die off, and then you'd you'd slowly try and come back from it. That's key. A lot of <laughs> chemotherapy does that. We're going to kill the cancer and a bunch of stuff along with it. Yeah. yeah. Well, why don't you try and heal the body instead? Yeah. Well, I mean, because if we don't know how to do it, the best we can is that, I guess. Yeah, kill the, kill the necrotic stuff. But the, the so. issue is, Jazz Jennings, I don't believe, was ever a human being who went to a doctor saying, I am distressed, I'm the wrong gender. Jazz was three years old when, when their parents said, you're actually a girl, and, and Jazz said, K. And Jazz is brilliant, and intellectually smart person. I can You can tell by listening to her she for is. like 10 seconds that she's got a brilliant mind that's all over the place, unfocused, and a, unfortunately a mother that's like pr provoking pain within her, it seems yeah. like. I'm, I'm blaming you, mom. You did this to her, Sick. dude. And you know what? For the record, if, if anybody you know hears this or gets this message to her, Freedom Forever will help her. If she wants that care, we wanna be a lifeline for her because I don't know if anybody's offered that, but we will provide resources for survivors of medical exploitation of this gender ideology. What Freedom Forever, what is it? Freedomforever.us, that's my nonprofit combating all forms of child exploitation. So if she wants help, we are here for her whenever she needs it. Well, how would she contact you? Um, she can go to the website, freedomforever.us, or you know, people can at her and say, you know, contact this org. If you ever need help, we will help you. Think about this though. There was a there was a post in 2016 that was someone took a post a coming out story what it was like coming out to their parents as gay and they changed gay to Trump supporter and it was funny because a bunch of Trump supporters are like wow that's hilarious it was it was cuz it was saying kind of generic things like i'm worried what my parents will think if they find out that i'm insert voting for Trump my parents are really against this they're they watch the news all the time and their views are very much blah 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 and you know my friends will 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 be mad at me and i'm worried what people will think I thought that was funny. I want you to imagine what it would be like, Robbie, if you came out tomorrow with, with an Antifa shirt on and just said, I have been lying. I am Antifa 100%. What would your friends say? What would your colleagues say? You know, that, that would, it would be very stressful for you, right? They would say, um, honestly, I think they would all laugh and be like, come on, Robbie, nobody believes that. <laughs> but like, but like, like, like if you came out and seriously told all of your closest friends and family that something they believed to be true was no longer true. Yeah. If jazz were to come out on TV to family and friends and sponsors, I'm a guy, this was a mistake. That would completely destroy everything jazz has. I think it would destroy this whole thing that's going on I right now. Sure. No, I no, think no, no. she's uh, the... uh, Okay, okay, yes, yes. But my, my point is just that Jazz will not do it. She might. She might. I, pr had I pray pain, that Jazz is brave enough to do it and to be the person that they were born to be and to embrace it and to let people love you back to life. Because here's the thing. Sometimes I do think people on our side can be guilty of reacting really harshly to some of these people as they get older. And it's because we start to forget these were people who were abused as children and in many cases have sexual traumas yeah. from being raped. And we do have to have some form of empathy to the trauma that these people have experienced. And with somebody like Jazz, some people are mad because they say, well, Jazz helped normalize this whole thing and it's hurt other people. Well, I blame her parents for that, frankly, and the doctors who lied and acted unethically. Well, this well, is somebody who was abused as a child and is now an adult. And if we open our arms and say, hey, we're willing to love you back to life for the person that you actually were born to be. Maybe maybe it won't be Jazz, but somebody will but embrace us. Jazz's doctor has come out saying it was wrong. Yep. So Jazz's doctor is not the person who, who lied. Jazz, the, Jazz's doctor is the person who screwed up and then came out and said, holy crap, this was a mistake. Well, I watched the doctor lie. I, I watched previous episodes like all the way through. I watched doctor lie from when they sold the idea mm -hmm. of surgery okay, well, to I'll the reality of yeah. surgery and what happened and making it sound like it would solve everything and make things better. And then later seeing what we all see now with Jazz, and clearly saying, four surgeries later, side effects later, damage later. In fact, Jazz at one point said she wouldn't even look at what happened after the surgeries initially because it was so horrific. They didn't want her to look. Wow. And when Jazz, needs when to Jazz get ended away up from taking people, when Jazz man. ended up taking a peek. She said it was horrifying. And well, I keep saying she I'm only saying because Jazz is a female name. It's like by by, uh, you know, just that natural order of things you want to say she, but we all know this is a biological male and that's indisputable. And these differences occur 
for a reason. And we've got to embrace our differences and, and get somebody like Jazz to love themselves back to life. There to are virtually no be. resources available for detransitioners, not medically, not mental health care, unless they do digging or find organizations like ours. That's the problem. Every single detransitioner I've spoken with, their surgeons won't s solve their unresolved issues. They don't want to touch them. They will not help, you know, deal with the issues, all the aftermath left behind. So there's a real mental health and, you know, physical health gap in what these detransitioners are experiencing. And I would say the majority of the ones that I've spoken to and work with have sexual trauma. In, in the in the gender queer book, we have to bring up because, you know, Ian bought it and it was very smart of him to do so as much as I don't want this individual to get money from this. Have you ever read it? Oh, yes. We, we exposed Sadly. it years ago. And so what we've talked about in the show is many conservative commentators who, who reference it never actually read it. They don't know it's a story about a little girl who was abused by her parents, who was peeing in the yard, who couldn't read till 12 and would wear crusted, dirty pads that smelled so bad the school counselor had to give her a talking to like you need to clean your body. That's child abuse. It's also and a sign it, of trafficking and exploitation. And it results in a person who is deeply confused and traumatized. Mm -hmm. Jazz is very much the same. Yes. How we save these people from this abuse is, is, is you know, I don't know. Because we used to have a system. We created a system, Child Protective Services, to be like, do oh, not. They're do, not doing No, anything. no, they're doing the opposite. Yeah. You know, someone yes. super chatted. If, you, if, you, if a kid threatened to hurt themselves and you brought them to the, to the, to the doctor, they would enforce mm -hmm. the 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 uh, surgeries. They're enforcers now. They're 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 absolute enforcers for the ideology. They will literally report the parents to CPS yes. to have the parents removed from the home if the parents are even questioning this in a way that they feel is not affirming. But yeah. not they they're part of the system here. They they they're the people profiting off yeah. this. But One, they're profiting off the surgeries and the hormones. Right. One of the uh, organizations that we work with has one case of a girl named Sage who was trafficked not once but twice through CPS after being forcefully put into state care because her caretakers, her family, would not affirm her transitioning. Okay, so that's what we're dealing with. The, that's what happens when you don't affirm your child. That's what they're trying to normalize. They're not just saying, hey, let's be tolerant. They're literally trying to steal children and use our government, you know, CPS systems to facilitate this. I think we have to have like a, a bigger conversation mm -hmm. As, as a country about CPS at some point, too, because this is separate from this. But what's going on in a lot of states with CPS is criminal. When you see the types of situations they're stealing kids and creating lifelong emotional trauma by taking them from their parents over ridiculous things, it's really scary. It's scary when you hear these stories. You know, just a case happened actually in Tennessee that I'm trying to help these people. They don't even live in Tennessee. They're from Georgia. The dad got pulled over, had a little bit of weed. And initially, the police told the mom she could take the kids, drive them back home. But she's like, well, I live in Georgia. I'm going to have to go bail my husband out first. She goes to the, the police station to do it. And there, they end up calling CPS. They take the kids from her. And they end up mandating a drug test on her. And so they don't even have the results of that, but they take the children. And even if it was marijuana, we're talking about somebody that could have done marijuana previously weeks earlier in Georgia and still had it in a follicle test or something. And you're saying that's good police work to steal these children, create lifelong traumas and possibly place them with a dangerous person when they're no danger. It didn't George Floyd. Crazy. Didn't George Floyd have kids in the back when he was on an eight ball? Uh, the wheel. He had kids. What happened to those kids? I don't kids? know if he had kids. It was, it was him and some other guy. Friend and, oh, okay. No, he was just some guy. Anyway, I don't want to deflect. I That's think you're insane. thinking of Jacob Blake. Thanks for watching this clip from the Timcast IRL podcast. Hang out with us live Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. and become a member over at Timcast.com for uncensored members only shows exclusive. Thanks for hanging out, and we'll see you all next time.